And um, I want to say um, my announcement is always good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. So I have four fabulous young ladies on here. We shaping and making and molding them to be world leaders. And so we believe in the feminine and we believe that they can get along. But some of them said that the feminine, uh, the females don't want to get along. What about that though? Right, right. <laughs> I think that's the truth. You know, I think um, as women, a lot of us don't know how to get along because growing up, with mama in the house mama didn't get along with anybody right um and so having that as you know um someone that we're supposed to model mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't start off good and you know something that's really not spoken of but it's very real in a lot of mother daughter dynamics is that when mothers have daughters, there's a secret jealousy that a lot of mothers have for their wow. daughters. Maybe they think that their daughter is prettier than, prettier than they are or whatever. You hear the stories all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you start off a relationship as a child, growing into a young adult, into a woman, like if it started off toxic, then you don't know how to get along with other women. How do you get along with other women and your mother didn't even like you? Right. Or your mother was always fighting with Miss Miss Cindy down the street because Miss Cindy was talking to her man or, or whatever the story may be. You know what I mean? I mean, so I think um, that's a lot of times where the breakdown in relationships between women occur, it starts in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. We, we're dealing with trust issues and That's also different. how we present ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could start with those two aspects and work into the different areas of rejection and abandonment. Um, mm -hmm. So if your mother didn't like you and a lot of people will say, well, what is she talking about? But the truth of the matter is, is that there are mothers that secretly didn't like their daughters. Um, they didn't like the way that they presented themselves, even if they were children that were beautiful and happy because they didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And for someone that didn't um, experience that aspect, they may have experienced rejection. And rejection can come in a form of pushing you back and saying, you don't know what you're talking about when you actually do, even as a grown person, but right. you are used to being put in the background. That's a form of rejection because what it's telling you is, is that your, your, your opinion is not valid. And then you grow up with that. So I'm gonna yeah. let y'all take it from there. Rejection, um, a, a mother that is, um, not actually imparting that you're a beautiful woman. Yeah, they're soul crushers. Okay. Wow, we're coming soul hard crushers. today. So I want to know what y'all got to say about mothers that um, crush your soul. And then, um, you know, come back with the fact that there are mothers that uplift your soul, because that's why we meet. Yeah. Right. Who's going first? Soul crushes. <laughs> I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Nah, she coming like. Soul <laughs> crushes. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. I mean, I, I she throw punches out the gate. Throw punches out the gate. Ooh, she coming in swinging. Uh, but yeah, my experience with my mother was non-existent because uh, she gave me up at birth. Um, she basically had me, called my dad, said, I waive my rights. If you want to come get her. So I had to learn how to interact with other females through family members, through cousins, aunts, um, friends of friends, friends of a family, my godmother. And growing up, I had to basically learn on my own, like pick and like take things that they would do, not knowing that they were unhealed and 
having toxic traits as well. So a lot of the times, like my dad was the black sheep of the family, which meant I was then for the black sheep of the family. So a lot of the times my aunts, I don't know, they're aunts by blood. They're not aunts by title. Excuse me. They were there, but they did not fulfill that role. Um, and like I, um, during one of my sessions with Miss Kim, I uh, told her one of my cousins, <clears throat> we were all, a lot of my cousins were, um, we were all upstairs and I was holding her baby and one of the big rap songs at the time came on and I think it was um, a Jay-Z song or something. And I started rapping along with my other cousins and next thing I know, I'm getting slapped in my mouth and I'm like, why are you slapping me? She's like, no, Jasmine's gonna be different. And looking back now, then I felt rejected. But looking back now, I, I learned that rejection was a blessing because with her doing that, she kind of sort of rejected me from the lifestyle that they were in because they were all having kids at 16, 17, living with older men and living off of older men. And she, for her to do that, she was just like, you're gonna be different. Even though her delivery was a little harsh, I still accept that now. I, I appreciate that now. Okay. So rejection is something that um, we can see that um, Jasmine came in the world with. And, you know, while we're talking about rejection, I want to just impute the fact that a lot of people don't realize that we're rejected from the womb. Yeah. When the, the child is born through the womb, that means that it's being rejected from the body, which means that there's going to be uh, a level of rejection that we're going to have because in order uh, for us to get out of our mother's body, it has to reject us. Eject, reject. It's pushing us out. I don't want you in this comfort no more. Get out, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that a lot of people have not looked at. I remember when... Um, Spirit showed it to me, um, rejection from the womb. And then it, it came from me reading um, about Jesus being um, planted in the tomb. And I heard Spirit say, rejected from the womb unto the tomb. So the womb is like a tomb, but there mm -hmm. is that rising. So Ashley, what's your, um, what's your thoughts on the rejection? How, how do you add to this here? Um, and women, how, how to bring women together and let them know that there are actually people that can help authentically get them over. So differing from Jasmine's um, upbringing, um, my mother was there. And, um, but I don't remember a lot of her parenting as I was younger because, you know, your mom, she's just there for you. She does what she needs to do and you accept it. And I recognize her sacrifices for me, you know, it'd be the day before school and I wanted to wear a special outfit here. My mom and I are eight o'clock in the store getting an outfit. So I recognize those things. But a lot of my understanding of relationships came from my sisters. I have two sisters. Um, they did not like me but I was the baby. I got everything I wanted. I was spoiled. And um, so a lot of that interaction with them, my one sister who I'm so close with now, she, she told me, Ashley, I kicked you out my room. I told you to stay away from me. And I'm like, but I just loved you. Like, I just thought you guys were the <laughs> coolest people in the world. And I don't understand why. Now coming full circle, I'm older. I realized that I was just a lot younger than them, so they weren't interested in playing Barbies, interested in doing the things that I was doing, and they listened to musical curse words, so, but, and then I was their corny kid sister, like, but um, my parents, fortunately enough, put me in dance, where I met a group of girls who had similar experiences. They were the youngest, or they were the only child, so we developed our own close-knit family of people that we trust. I told them, like, my dance friends are my lifelong friends. I've invited them to my wedding. Some of them are invited to my birthday celebrations. Like, we keep in contact all the time. And it became a safe, safe place where we could just be exactly who we were. So though I was rejected by my actual siblings, I found my own siblings. So sometimes in life, when you are rejected, you have to find your own community. And you have to be comfortable in knowing that 
yes, it sucks to be rejected. It's not, it's not a good feeling. You're not going to like it. You might cry. You might get mad, but you're going to find people who relate to you. And when you get past the idea of, oh, I'm better than you because of this, or, oh, you like to do that. That's weird. When you get past that, you meet people who are awesome. Like I would tell you probably out of my friends, I'm the weirdest one. The things that I like to do, watch sci-fi movies, analyze things, read books, sit in quiet time. They're all like, you don't like to go out to the club? No, not anymore. Mm -mm, it's too loud. But <laughs> too many people <laughs> and too many people. And then sometimes they're fighting. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I just want to be in peace. So my friends know if you want to hang out, meet me in peace. And sure. it's no judgment. It's no weirdness. Um, but I wanted to touch on something else that Nyela brought up about um, the jealousy between mothers and daughters. Mm -hmm. I had never saw that in my life until um, my husband um, looking at his family dynamic with his, with my now sister-in-law and his mother and realizing that their situation was fighting and wars and meanness and anger and then realizing how they were brought up and how the cycle kept continuing is so bad so that my sister-in-law and my husband had had no relationship up until maybe like a year ago and she I would talk to her about it because it hurt my heart because I always wanted brothers and I thought she was so fortunate to have brothers so and then she was like, you know, actually growing up, the only person I had to look up to about what a woman was supposed to be was my mom. So if she was nasty, if she was mean, if she was, if she called people out their name, that's what I learned how to do. And I said, but then how did you get friends? How did you get past that? And she said, I don't know. And to be honest, like a lot of my friendships went through situations where I didn't know how to act around them. I didn't know how to be around them. When they would show me love, I'd be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, wow, like, I don't, I don't have that. So I'm sorry for that you had that experience. Um, I'm grateful for the information that you're giving to me though. But like, how do you reason with it now? Now she's in Korea and has like a beautiful life in my opinion, because she's living her dream and to see her growth i've been with her brother for 10 years so to see her growth in 10 years it's been probably the most beautiful thing and even her trust level with me was not there i said to her i always wanted to be best friends with you because i wanted a sister my age and she was like yeah no i like you but not that much and i was like huh and she was like but no now i love you and i'm like but how do we how do we get past that and she was like it was a lot of my own trust issues my own insecurities because of how i was raised with my mom she yelled at me she, and you know they had very tumultuous experiences even while i was with her brother and seeing things where i would just always be there like you need a ride you need me to come get you and she was like that showed me that there were good people and i was like wow so understanding that her mom kind of created a situation for her of distrust right away is is scary and me being a mom i always want to make sure that i'm not doing that for my daughter so right it's so, just bringing it full circle for me yeah that's um a, a beautiful perspective now nicole what how would you jump in and add or give your um rendition of how you feel about women actually coming together like me and you were talking yesterday um and you said but kim women are they have problems they don't want to pretty much get along you can say it in your own words but that's it's real Right. They don't they don't like each other. It's hard to find it. Well, as uh well, last night I was doing some reading and I figured that everybody has their own different burdens, like their own fears, their own emotional um things that they're holding on to. So it's like when you crack that egg, the layers, well, I could say onion. When you cut that onion, it's so many layers to a woman that people don't pay attention that that's the spot that needs care. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know, or we don't know that maybe, okay, 
Like, for example, I'm scared of clowns. I don't know why I'm scared of clowns. Um, I'm the baddest thing out here. Like, I'm not scared of nothing, but I'm scared of a clown. So where did that come from? So it's like, if someone is not knowing that I'm scared of clowns, then they might have a birthday party or have something that has clowns in it. So it's not that they're being insensitive to me. It's just, that's something that I have to deal with. And mm-hmm. if they help me reject it, then I'm gonna still deal with it. But if someone says, you know what? Today, not tomorrow, right now, this hour, Miss Harris, you're going to face whatever's going on with a clown. You're going to stand there. You're going to see nothing's going to happen. If you have to cry, because that's what I'm going to do. If you got to cry, that's the emotion you have to go through. But at the end of the day, what's going to happen is the clown is going to be there and you are too. So when I realized that, I'm like, Dad, put too much um, expectations on one. Not just as a woman, but as a person. My mother had epilepsy, so she kind of like didn't even have a choice not to be a parent. So I had to be real open to understanding why people's lives and journeys are different and why man is the same way it is. Mm-hmm. And learning how not to bother other people on their journey. Let them drive their car. They have to pay attention and focus. But I just looked around and it's like, why am I the only person that thinks like this? Or why am I only around people that just can't get it? And it bothers me. And I don't (laughs) want to be bothered by that. But that's my thought. I um... no. I want to I wanna address the clown first and say that um, I didn't know that, uh, and she my sister, right? <laughs> I didn't know she was afraid of clowns until we were going to do something at work, and she said, as long as ain't no damn clowns there, pretty much. <laughs> and I was like, what? Anyway, I would help you as I'm helping these young women walk into the... Um, are of who they are which is discussing these topics and also bringing forth a generation of young women that are coached on their ability to speak out on what they believe um i believe that some of the issues that we have they have to do with mothers in the home but also what i hear is individuality being attacked so when you're different I can say that I've dealt with that. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I had mother issues, but it was just that my mother is, my mother talks all the time. She is uh, something to deal with. She overbearing. And for me, I do feel like there may have been the limitations of me coming forward to be who I am because women back in the 60s and 50s, um, they did things to a certain standard or they were told to, which means that they were programmed. So we have programming. We have programming that says that if you do something that is not of the norm of the system, you're gonna be rejected. If you get up and you start talking about, before protests started, you start talking about issues, you're gonna be rejected, right? If you get up and you start dancing in class, they're going to send you to the principal's office. And I'm not saying that a child should be reprimanded if they're disturbing the class, but I think in school there is a need to um, build and create and show young women and young men that they have possibilities without limits. Yes, rules are there, but because of rules and stigmatizations in school that we're talking about, if you don't go 
and you got problems and you're always getting in trouble, then you're going to the principal's office. What is that setting up in a young woman's head rather than a teacher, a female, taking her and endorsing who she is as a young woman, seeing beyond her flesh or her acting out and saying, I'm going to mentor you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. You see, if, if, if there's a parent in the home and we could have mothers that are in the home that are doing a good job. But I will tell you, when we get out in society, this is another issue. Because as Nicole said, I'm driving my car. And I ain't going against the rules. But you got a problem with the way that I drive. And that's just a way that she is explaining how she carries herself. You have a problem with the way that I I correspond with life, but I ain't bothering you. Right. Mm -hmm. You have a problem with the way that I speak because the majority speak Wu Tang language. Mm -hmm. Right, Jasmine? <laughs> Feel free to I, speak. I like the Wu Tang crew, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> You have a problem as an older sister, I am, with always trying to make things correct, you know? <laughs> and we all have our personalities, right? Right. The thing mm -hmm. is, is that we have to accept each other for who we are. Mm -hmm. So when I come on and I ask y'all for a topic, I give it to y'all, and you're welcome to come up with one, the rejection comes in if I'm not in a mind to realize what I'm saying to an individual could hurt them. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to shy away from giving my opinion. It means that I'm going to be sensitive to your feelings until you can grow some more. You know, I'm not going to throw you away rejection or throw or, or judge you because your language um, is not the same as mine or that you have a language barrier. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe that the problem with young women and older women is, is that we lost something years ago, even from the church where it was jealousy. It wasn't just with mothers now. Mm -hmm. Some mothers had done put that into their children. But and when we went into associations and society, into ministries where we could trust people, what we found is, is that it wasn't a safe place to trust anybody mm -hmm. as well because mm -hmm. they were sizing us up. If you're mm -hmm. not with a group now, yep. if you ain't, you don't fit in, you ain't getting in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, it's a lot of women out here who feel like they're on an island by themselves, you know. Um, they didn't have, you know, one thing that Ashley said was, you know, um, you have to go out and find your community, people that ex accept you. Some people don't ever find that community. You know what I mean? Ever. I mean, I just turned 40 a week ago, and I'm just now at 40 to the point where I don't care anymore. You know what I mean? I'm going to be me. Right. So, you know, I didn't grow up around people who, um, from my perspective, that way I felt like I could be a hundred percent myself. So, I mean, as we're navigating through, through life, sometimes, yeah, you want to be there to support other women, but some women will resist that support because they don't even know, support what is that you know what i mean how how can you support right. me like i don't even know what that means so they feel literally feel like they're on an island and they will really like act out against you but i, I mean and i think something that we have to just acknowledge is that everybody can't come because everybody is not going to want to make the decision within themselves to work on themselves some people are still continuing to look outside of themselves and and still blaming everyone else and instead of healing that right. and taking some type of responsibility and i think in, until you do that there's always going to be women out here who are not you're not going to be able to get along with and that's okay 
And I think, when, but there are enough of us out here who are willing mm-hmm. to come together mm-hmm. and get along. And, and I, I just think that in groups like that, like there has to be some sort of standard, like, okay, this is what we're, where we stand for. And if you are outside of that standard, then you will have to be corrected. And if that means that you have to sit on time out, outside of this group until you could get it together and that might just be what you need to do right because you, the process. You, yeah i mean because yeah. you can't let if you let one person come in and affect the group then the group is done mm-hmm. yes uh-huh. the group is done we so know. i i, I we believe did. that i'm sorry someone was talking <laughs> we, we had that experience um my my sister-in-law wanted to create a a panel where women would come together and we would discuss um, current events, ideas, just to make us a way to be relatable, which I'm all for. I was super excited. And um, it wasn't going according to her plan. Yeah, People weren't doing what she wanted them to do. We weren't posting on social media enough. However, there were no standards discussed. Mm-hmm. So it became this I'm doing everything and I'm sick of it. And Jasmine said, I'm done. Yeah, I was like, uh, I was like, um, because it was me and Ash, me, Ashley and her, we were all posting and the other, the other ladies that were involved, they weren't doing anything. So it was like all three of us were carrying the weight. But at the same time, my cousin wasn't voicing what she wanted us to do or how she wanted us to do it. And so, like, I got to the point where it was like, I had just started sessions on this camera. I was like, um, you know, I can't do this. Like, this is disruptive to my peace. And right now, I'm choosing my peace over y'all. I love y'all. When y'all get it together, maybe we can revisit this. And I was like, but I have to right now temporarily remove myself. And she was like, well, fine. She got mad. And she was like, don't temporarily remove yourself. I'll remove you permanently. And I was like, okay, that's mm-hmm. fine too. <laughs> All is well. Right. That's was, right too. It okay. was almost like she was a one woman on a crusade. And, and I'm like, if you bought us on for us to help you and to be a part of something with you, you then can't have standards that aren't communicated. Like this, this isn't how it functions. Like it doesn't work this way. And she's like, well, y'all aren't. And I'm like, we can't do what you want us to do. And unless you let us be who we are, you asked us part of this because of who we are, not because of who you want us to be. Right. That's when you have to question the intention of the person who even started it. Like it was probably a selfish reason for, uh, you know, wanting to bring the group together anyway. But um, yeah, that's my two cents. Something else I was going to say, but it'll come back to me. (laughs) I, I believe that the number one thing is to set the the standard of why you're doing something and what your motivation is behind it. And so mine is, you know, when you guys are on, I always bring you into topics that I feel you can discuss yourself. I think it opens you up to a platform of being able to discuss amongst yourself also as time goes on. It's it's a platform to help women see that they have validity in their speaking abilities, also in um, their personality to know that they are accepted. What does acceptance mean? That you're not rejected? If you want change, that's one of the variables. If you want change, Mm -hmm. then you could sign up for personal development sessions. A lot of people do shy away from personal development, but it is the word personal because Mm -hmm. it's the core of you that's coming forward and if you've been rejected if you've been judged we all know how that feels i know how it feels to be someone that has saw spiritual things from um, a, a young person but people uh reject me because of that very nature or because my my thinking is peculiar so when i meet with young women or men that have the same circumstances, I encourage them because the pain that I have felt gives me a premise to give them encouragement. That's my um, ability to give back to the world, give back to people so that we can get back to a place of believing beyond the external. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Personal development is not developing only your uh, external being. You've already did that. That's why everyone is having, you know, problems because everything mm -hmm. is developed from sight, outside mm -hmm. sight. So, so outside, you know, we look good. Right. <laughs> right. But what's Let's going on inside? Yeah, but you know what? This is where I might need some work. <laughs> it's, okay. And it's funny you should so say that because when you talk well, I about I want to open up that inside uh -huh. and share that so somebody can say to me, hey, this is like uh, we need to work on as a whole. Because if you work on it and you know I'm, somebody else is need to work on it. Mm -hmm. So let's like get this together. So it's like challenges. We're gonna have to go through them. Yeah. So I mean, why not just resolve the challenge or learn how to go through the challenge in a better womanly way? And you know very well. Recently, when you started making those changes, what it was like. You got a lot of kickback and rejection, right? Yes, Lord. And what'd you do? I went in, I I went in hiding. I got away from people. Yeah. And I got with myself. Yeah. And uh, I had to face myself. Mm -hmm. And when you face yourself, a lot of trigger, a lot of things that you don't know, like sometimes you might be um, deceptive. And you might have walked and felt like I've been telling, I've been keeping it real all this time. But you already know what you have and have I been doing. So if mm -hmm. I don't tell you, first of all, I'm not trust because I can't trust y'all. Guess what? I've been deceptive. And y'all, I was manipulative. Because you if if I don't tell you that, you can't help me. I can't help. Okay. I can't even be accountable because I'm still hiding it within myself. I have been deceptive. I have been thinking negative and I have been manipulating and trying to stuff. I learned that I needed help on it and that would help me on the outside, not mm -hmm. fixing this stuff. It helped me on the outside because then I attract more of. Mm -hmm either people I need help or people that's going to bring that out of me so I'll do a better job or it helped me enjoy my achievement on doing better within yeah. myself. You know, so I just want us to learn, accept each other, not forget the the bad, forget the good. Don't, don't show shine your light when I'm doing excellent. Cause that's not when I grow. I need to. I need yeah. to shine your life. When I'm going through the the sun, it it, it cleanses the, the air. It cleanses and all these things. So if you only look at me when I'm in good position, then that's what I'm always do. And I'm gonna lose sight of you being narcissistic right now. What? You being controlling right now. Because mm -hmm. everybody don't want to face, oh, I'm not, I'm not hateful. Sometimes we are. Yeah. I don't judge people. Oh, yes, I do. Just y'all don't hear it. I have to catch myself. If you ever seen a woman going down the street just because she didn't comb her hair or her wig was new, and you stop to yourself like I'm negative, judging. So yeah. how do we fix that? How do you know about me? How do I trust you? Well, thank you for sharing that, Michelle. That was um, very transparent. Um, That's Nicole. You said I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, you Nicole. good, you good, you good. Nicole, I'm sorry. Um, good. One thing that I you like said, that. Kim, that um, I think is important when you talked about personal development. I know women who will spend $2,500 on a bag will, but will not invest a dollar and uh -huh. themselves and their own healing and it's but then they'll look at you like who you think you are and it's like yo you 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 are investing in the wrong things you know what i mean i'm i'm investing right. in me and you buying bags 
you know? Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people really need to um, reprioritize their lives mm-hmm. that if, if you want, again, looking outside of yourself, if you're looking at somebody and you, you think you want to be like that person, then you need to be finding out, like, how did you get where you are? Like, what, what, do you, mm-hmm. what did you do differently? Right. Ask those types of questions before, they, before you look at them judging or hating, hating on them. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a journey, and you got to invest in yourself. Especially most people have so many traumas, and they don't know where to begin. Right. They don't right. even know where to begin. So if you're one of those people, then yeah, you you personal development or counseling, coaching, whatever you want to do, like is is for you. Right. Uh-huh. And a lot of people don't know that they have the problems with choices until they come into a place where they don't have no other choice. Like, okay, you you brought up the bag. But I remember hearing a pastor say that ladies were going bad of hair. You are, you know, you go, you're going to buy bags of hair, but you don't, you know, you don't do this, that, and the other. And it's not judgment, it's provoking to think. Because if I had problems with my mother, you know, like I've worked with women and their parents pimped them out. I mean, we have some real um, serious stuff that, we see uh, they they've been on drugs and this is not to say that we want to put nobody's business out there we just want people to know that we know that it's real rejection means that somebody's child was put into um the streets to pimp them out for money you know it gets more intense than some of the stories that you guys have talked about and that's somebody that needs real help in order to develop into the possibilities that they have in them a lot of people will walk away from the possibilities of greatness because they don't see that they can make it over the mountains that they grew up with the mountain can be moved it's just that when you hear someone that sounds like something that you think you have within you, you identify with that and then you ask them. Because identification means that if I'm a fish, then I'm going to think I'm a fish and I'm going to swim in the water. You know? And right. that means that if I'm a fish and I feel like I'm out of water, I feel like I have more to me then I am going to, like Nicole said, I'm going to search myself out and I'm going to say, where is my deception? Where is the manipulation at? Where are the lies that I've been telling myself and why did I start doing this? Of course, because I'm human and I live in a world, but what part of my childhood or my, you know, my teenage years brought me to believe that I'm, I'm no good or I'm rejected or um, I've, I've been abandoned to have these feelings of, of, of nothingness because that's mm-hmm. what rejection, abandonment, um, those kind of issues, that's what they bring us into. Mm-hmm. So you get with people that recognize that they have value. And how do they have value? It's not just because they look good. It's what they say out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Because out of your heart flow the issues of the heart, of of your mind. Out of the mouth flow the issues of the heart. And what that means is is that whatever has been put in there is what you're going to speak. That means be careful of who you are associating with. But when you hear people talking about meaningful things i want to be a part of it mm-hmm. i had you know i had a call today and some people asked me about being a part of something and one of the things that i may not have done five years ago is told them how i felt before i gave them an answer but today i told them how i felt about a former association and what I would not do, what I know I've done, and how I feel about how it was reciprocated in the past. And if it's that kind of show, oh no, because 
when we all here, we talking about liberation from our past, mm -hmm. who we used to be, walking into who we're becoming, mm -hmm. and moving away from deception. Mm -hmm. That's how you enjoy your life. That's how you do. You attract positive things, and then you value yourself. It's not a person, place, or thing that has to value you. It's how much mm -hmm. you value you after you mm -hmm. found that the rejection was part of your lesson in life, by the way. Yeah. Yes. 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 The judgment was a good thing because if they judged you, you didn't need to be around them. The other thing is, what are you judging about yourself? Mm -hmm. How yes, do you exactly. see yourself? That's where you begin to value yourself because you get an idea of where you belong, who you belong with. And sometimes people have given you a lesson and didn't accept who you were and you felt like you was nobody. Mm -hmm. But then you had to come to grips and say, that's what they think, but this is what I think. So you got to put your foot down. But I know. Right, mm -hmm. okay, say right. it again. Right. This is what I know. <laughs> yes. So that's where we are. That's why I um, brought you on because I believe a, a pastor told me back in 2009, she said, you're going to build a great women's ministry. I don't know if I would call it that, but I have had a burden to build up women because over the years, that's what I could see is that um, there's a perpetual generation of women being broken. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it in my family. I've seen it in, you know, the um, families of those that I work with, you, you all in, you know, um, what do we want to do? We want to be a part of building those that want to be built up. And that's the criteria. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. if y'all went away from here and you, you started writing down rules for this engagement and when we come on, the first rule is going to be that you want to change and develop because if you coming mm -hmm. in with toxicity, I got you. And guess yeah. what? I got you. You out the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Toxic That's relationships right. out the door. We That's done right. with that. That's over. So over. Yes. So over. Ooh. And just wash our hands with that one. They got I don't head even to the comprehend it anymore. What me not speaking no English? I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Yes, yeah, English no good. English no right. good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. So, um, I think we can. We should um get ready to wrap up this this here session because it'll be about forty five minutes to an hour, and it's gonna be on. But you know. You guys, um, if you want to come on next week and we begin to um, chat again, then we can. Your sisters that are out there, if they um, read or, or they hear anything that um, makes them want to come in um, to a, a group where you're accepted, you are accepted. And you can bring all your baggage, but one of the things that's a criteria is that you are going to want to let go of toxicity. And we know what toxicity is because we've experienced it. We're in a place where we're building from relationships that have broken uh, mm -hmm. us or we've broken them, huh? Because, okay. I mean, you ain't, yes. yeah. you know, you ain't, you know, you ain't just got women that are being um, battered. You got women that are uh, battering. So we, you know, there's more to, to give in these conversations such as abuse, domestic, physical, mental, uh, uh, emotional, verbal. And these identities uh, have to be washed because if you identify with being abused, you got to know that you can overcome that. You got to know how to use the abuse for your uh, betterment. And that means that anybody that's on here that's been abused, then I say use it for your gain because your pain can become your gain. It's not yeah. something that you allow the seeds to uh, permeate and stay there, pull those roots out and become who you were created to be. Yeah. 
And um, that's my final say. I'll let you guys give a rebuttal and then we'll close up. Who's first? We're closing <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I have a great time on, on the chat. Um, I, I look forward to healing with everyone and tea techniques of healing, um, sharing anything that will lift us up um, as we be, uh, our, as we're out individually. Um, I am a gatherer of information. So I'm always, my ears are always open for things and ideas that um, we could talk about and think, you know, and help others. Great. Can I just say um, to that woman who may be watching this, who um, thinks she's on an island by herself, you're not alone. You're not alone. And um, there are people who are willing and ready to receive you if you're willing to be received. Um, we will, you will never be pushed out of your comfort zone, but you, you have to come open That's and true. ready to heal. So um, again, you're not alone. Jazz and Ashley. Um, I just want to speak to the girls who were rejected. Um, your intelligence is what makes you. Um, it, your rejection really was a blessing because it taught you how to love unconditionally and without holding any boundaries to your love or limitations to your love. Don't, it's not a curse. It is a gift. It is a wonderful gift for you to love so freely. Accept that, embrace it. I just want to say, if, if you're listening, you've listened this long, you've enjoyed what we speak about, um, don't be afraid. It's not scary. It's probably the most beautiful experience you'll have in your life. You're getting to know yourself. And when you know yourself, who, who can stand before you and judge you? Who can stand before you and tell you who you are? No one. Because you are so self-secure and so confident. You'll glow. You'll look different. You'll feel different. And you'll attract people who want to know what you do. And it'll give your life a different type of purpose than yeah. sitting in what may feel like an island, sitting in what might be your rejection, sitting spiraling and feeling like you'll never be anything more than what you are. You can be more. You can be greater. You can become a woman of power. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I am a woman of power, so we still have those t-shirts, and so um, we just invite you. So the email uh, address will be in the description box, and you know, um, there's other platforms that these young ladies have. I think each one of them have a YouTube, so you'll be able to look them up. I think that maybe Nicole and Ashley are working on theirs. But we got what goddess realm. I can't hear you. You put yourself on mute. Sorry. Yes, it's <laughs> the goddess realm, and that's spelled G O D hyphen D E S S realm on YouTube. Yep. And um, uh, jazz. Yours is travel. You gonna Ins travel, inspire, create. Okay. And um, I need to put yours on my wall. So everybody's coming along, and um. Uh, at, at its best, this is my last interjection and I'm, we're going to close up with this video. I believe that everyone has a voice to be heard. And one of the biggest things with women is someone not being there to validate you or your voice. And so that's what I give. You know, I think that there's no exception to the rule when you, when you, um, when you're actually ready because everyone is made perfect in God's image. Okay. All right. So we'll see you guys next week. And um, thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.